President Bola Ahmed Tinubu is touted as one of the most sagacious when it comes to money management and by extension growing the economy, having grown the economy of Lagos states in leaps and bounds. With Nigeria's economy in shambles, according to experts, what is the future under a new presidency led by Bola Ahmed Tinubu? We'll be looking at that today on The Breakfast. We'll also be taking a look at headlines on some national dailies and of the press where we have someone join us to analyze them. Very good morning to you and thanks for joining us on The Breakfast. My name is Nyam Gul. And I am Maureen. Good to have you join us on this new beginning of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Mm. You're welcome. Yeah. Today we'll be, uh, we'll be looking at various issues, mostly political and what concerns us as a nation. But our theme has not changed from what it usually is because Tuesday we zero in on technology. So we'll be uh, having as a team of the day, has technology made us smarter or dumber? Has technology made us smarter or Dharma? That's the question we'll be attempting to answer today. Or at least we will have you think it in your heart as we go along on the show. Yeah, there's been lots of questions raised about technology, concerns raised about not just whether it has made us Dharma or more intelligent, but whether we can control technology mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in the future. Uh, founding fathers of technology have raised those concerns. We've talked about it a bit in, yeah. in the past and being technophile Tuesday we are raising some of these questions how is technology impacting our lives one of the experts uh, like you mentioned said that um, if AI which a lot of them are withdrawing from now because they think is dangerous if AI is given the attention that they want to give it right now and nothing seriously is done to control it well people may use it to kill others so it might become so dangerous that uh, you cannot, because you cannot send assassins anymore, you just send an AI to do the dirty job mm -hmm. and it's going to be really hell for some people who maybe cannot afford it. Uh, because if you can afford it, maybe your own AI, uh, AI <laughs> will, will fight. I don't even know how that is. But something must be done to either stop it or put measures in place that can control it. Yes. Uh, do you know that the leader of Bahrain is, now has a bodyguard that's a computer? It's mm -hmm. some huge, giant robot. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's costing them about $15 million. Huge. You need to see him. And, uh, and so they are saying, the, the, the person who posted that on, on, the, on the group that I belong to said, well, Nigeria is here talking about this and that. Look at where the world is going right now. <laughs> but yes, there are huge concerns about the information technology that we're getting, uh, absorbing and, mm -hmm. and patronizing, how safe are they and how lazy have they made us? Do you read without the use of spell checks? Do you write without the use of spell checks? Mm -hmm. Can you write a letter right now or send an email right now on your own without using your spell check to confirm what you've written? Uh, so those are some of the issues you need to ponder. And, and that should also make us, you know, embrace hard copy. Yeah. We've left hard copy. A lot of people have abandoned hard copy, mm. uh, novels, books, newspapers, and things that hitherto challenged our intelligence, you know, and we have become a little bit more relaxed. Yes, they, they help. They help. Yeah. They make things faster and all of that. But let's not lose our strength to mm. this. Yeah, in these computers. Like, like they say, uh, w sometimes when something comes too fast, it goes too fast mm -hmm. as well. Uh, a candle that burns uh, twice as bright burns uh, half as, as long. So you, you take something. I, I teach a lot of students, and I, when I ask them to maybe get um, something like a dictionary, because if I'm teaching them how to talk and all that, I, I ask them to get a special dictionary, and they say, why can't we just download it from the internet? And I say, no, I insist that it has to be a hard copy. Because one, um, when you have a soft copy, you just go there, you press it, maybe it pronounces it for you. But when you fail to learn on your own, uh, you, you encounter a word that you need to 
put in your head. You don't even know where to start from, how to transcribe, how to do, write it out and all that. You don't know that because you didn't have that discipline to learn it. You just wanted the computer to do it for you. But it won't always be there. You go to my village now and they tell you, uh, uh, my name is Arawone Wontamtam. And you're like, okay. Let me write it down. You don't know how to do it. Let me go to the phone. You can't find it Google in the phone. So, is your <laughs> what are you going to do? So I insist on hard copy, and hard copy is really, it is, really it interesting. It is, it is, it is. Because even though Google Translate would help you, uh, mm. give you the sound, uh, if, if you had the foundation on phonetic notation, yeah. you'll be able to transcribe yourself. It would be easier for you to mm -hmm. be able to break down the different, yes. you know, so it's, 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 it's important to not let go of what we have because of what we are getting mm. from computers. I watch movies. I don't know if you watch movies as well, but if, you, if I compare the time I was only getting the stories from the Hadley Chases of this world and the Katas of this world, the novels, uh, and the movie, there seemed to be something really missing. I, I don't know whether it's because in the novel, you don't miss any single thing because it is you. It's at, at your own pace, in your own time, that you read it and you absorb it differently from how you're watching the movie. Movies are fine, yes, but the experience of novels, the hard copy novels, is something else. Of course, it's you can't compare else. novels and movies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can't compare them. They are two different things, and it is beautiful. Well, technology for you... Mm. Which, uh, I'm going to bring back my word, balance, Yeah. because technology is good. It's helping us, yeah. making things easier, making life easier, and uh, making things faster. Mm -hmm. Yet, there are some values that we had before the use of these technologies, before the help and assistance of these technologies, mm -hmm. that we must not throw away. Well, Otherwise, we'll be the worst for it. One of them was friendship, physical <laughs> friendship. Yes, <you laughs> now, there are a lot of people who have millions of followers but they really don't have friends yeah. you know you just you're just there until you really have a friend you would not know the difference between just having an internet friend and a real physical friend that will be there for you yeah. and at the end of the day in all age all of us what we will really need is companionship nothing mm -hmm. else mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. if you don't build that companionship right now because you're you're concentrating on the followers everybody's talking about self you know it's myself you have to love myself everybody's now becoming selfish no nothing like community life anymore mm -hmm. uh, because we have everything at the palm of our hands we have people deliver food to us we have people deliver clothes to us and everything we just sit in our houses and some people even work from the comfort of their houses mm -hmm. so no more exercises no more anything you just stay there and you're getting too comfortable. There's a point you can get too comfortable, and it's not good for it. You, you know, you raised some very cogent points there. This virtual friendship, mm -hmm. uh, it's made people, and that's why a lot of them who depend so much on these virtual friendships become very sensitive. Mm -hmm. They are the ones that easily suffer from cyberbullying mm -hmm. because maybe one or two of their friends online who used to like them mm -hmm. and, and click like and all of that suddenly says, oh, you're getting too fat or you're doing that, and they get depressed. This yeah. person that liked me, yeah. that clicked my abunang, is now telling me I'm this, and then they, they get depressed, and, and you know, it, it just, it's not a way to live. Mm. It's not a way to live, and as you've said also, people are becoming too much into myself, myself. Yes, yes. And so we are in a world, Nyamgo, where people have become too sensitive. Mm too sensitive. Women are becoming too sensitive. Men are becoming too sensitive. Um, whilst I have nothing against the feminists and those who are into women liberation, mm -hmm. I think sometimes women now whine too much. Mm -hmm. Every little thing you say, oh, it's sexist. Mm -hmm. it's, you know, I'm a feminist. Uh, and then um, you find men feeling easily uh, irritated. They feel their masculinity is being challenged. Um, people, everything is now being tagged one thing or the other. And that's why sometimes I wonder if we're not uh, overemphasizing uh, uh, on this mental health thing mm. where everything is a problem. Yeah. I, it's, everything it, is yeah. a cause of problem. Everything shouldn't be a cause of problem. <laughs> <laughs> I give you an instance. You see, there was a time someone was trying to insult me and he called me village man. 
And I laughed and said, thank you. And he was infuriated, like, you don't even know when someone is insulting you. And I was like, okay, how is that an insult that you reminded me that I have roots? Because that's how I interpreted it. Yeah. But that showed me that if I had told him that, he would have flared up and, like, say that I'm insulting him. How is that even an insult? We shouldn't take everything, like, you know, because someone else is saying this is supposed to be an insult. You let that define you. Mm. I'm a village man. I like it. And it reminded me that there are things I'm missing from the village because I used to, I, I grew up in the village. I know what I enjoyed, and I compare that to the town. It's just that I have to be in town. So it's not an insult. Yeah. It's not everything that should be interpreted like someone yeah. is trying to insult you. If you tell me now that I'm black, I wouldn't first of all think it is racist. Even if you're white, you're pink, you're whatever color, I wouldn't think of it as racist. You're just stating the truth. I am black. You tell me I'm a man, you wouldn't, I wouldn't say because people are non-binary, people are this and that, mm -hmm. so many things are coming up, things that a um, few years ago well, will, lead, will lead you to a psychiatric ward. Yeah. Now there are rights. Everybody's just talking yeah, about it. Yeah, it's you're accused of being a narcissist, you're accused of being a racist, you're accused of being proud. And it, 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 friendship. Very that, important. That friendship, thing. that not, uh, human connectivity, that yeah. communality, that you know, communal life that we used to have, where people sit down and laugh and crack jokes mm -hmm. and, and just make fun of one another. I think we're taking ourselves rather too seriously these days. Yeah, I think I so I think too. that's just it. We're I taking so ourselves too. too seriously these days. And it's, it's, it's a cause for worry. It's a cause for, a cause for worry, my, my sister. Um, uh, well, uh, technology also. Because of technology, yesterday a pronouncement was made. Today we are feeling the impact already. And I hope something will be done very, very fast. Yesterday yeah. was the swearing in of uh, Asiwajibola Ahmed Tinubu. He has become our president, the 16th president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria uh, right now. And um, he made a pronouncement or... He made a revelation, rather, that the um, subsidy. Yes, uh, the. He started by saying um, the budget that I was given. I am told that there was no provision for subsidy. So, as of now, subsidy is removed. It's gone. Yeah. So today, you go to the roads. Vehicles that were carrying you for five hundred naira is carrying for. Uh, they are carrying for eight hundred. Some are carrying for a thousand naira because they do not even know whether there's a direction. If subsidy has been removed, will there be palliatives? Will there be some other measures that will make sure that people don't suffer for it? Feeling stations are shutting down. They have right shut, not shutting down. Yeah. They have so, shut down in Yango. You need to see the queues at the fuel stations are horrifying, I must say. Um, so people are receiving this news about subsidy with mixed feelings. Mm -hmm. While some are excited that, yes, finally, let's... Let's, let's get to know what it is. Because today you hear that we are subsidizing. Tomorrow here we're not subsidizing. Mm -hmm. And then those who said there was never a thing like subsidy would come to power and, and then they are subsidizing. Mm -hmm. And so it became a whole lot of mess. We weren't sure exactly what it was. Uh, were people making a kill out of it and, you know, uh, stealing Nigerians blind in the name of subsidy? Mm -hmm. So that pronouncement was something that a lot of people welcome because, yeah, maybe it will bring some, some level of transparency in that sector. Mm -hmm. But then some are saying that perhaps the new president should have at least made sure that one or two refineries were put in place mm -hmm. before embracing it the way he has done. Uh, because, you know, right now, as you have said, people are confused as to which direction things yeah, are going. There was going no, to. not much education on what subsidy really is and what effects it will have. And now that subsidy is removed, you know, what are they, what next, uh, as the question is. Some people right now who are selling fuel are selling it at 500 naira. Mm -hmm. Typical Just this of Nigerians morning, to take From 180 to 500 anything. naira. Yeah, typical of it's Nigerians. It's crazy. Typical of Nigerians, because they feel in their stations right now, they bought before yesterday. Yeah. 
Yeah. Matter of fact, I heard that before yesterday, the fuel station, some fuel stations had shut down in anticipation yeah. of what may come from uh, the newly sworn in president's uh, speech regarding that, because definitely everyone knew he was going to say something that bordered on subsidy. Mm -hmm. And so here, there you have it. Uh, Nigerians are beginning to um, feel it. But let's be patient. He just came in. Let's, they had their inaugural dinner last night. Today, work begins. Mm. So I imagine that before Friday, we're going to hear some pronouncements, yeah. further clarifications we did on that. which way this is going to lead us. Yes, yeah. Um, if Nigeria is 200 million or 210 million, we don't even know what the figure is. And we may not know for the next 10 years because census may not hold because of a lot of things. And, you know, understandably so. Um, if we are, let's say, 200 million, mm. I guarantee that 150 are not experts in the economy. I am not, <laughs> and I'm a media person, I'm not. I, I know some figures, I know some things that I could explain away, but I do not know how the economy really, really works. Now, you tell me, for instance, that Lagos generates an IGR of 50 billion. The only question I will ask you is, how does that affect the average Lagosian? If you tell me now that subsidy has been removed, for instance, okay, everybody's applauding, but how will that translate to me having a better life? For instance, I'm supposed to take a bus for, uh, to come to work, and I'll pay double of what I was paying now that subsidy has been removed, yet people are clapping. I will not understand. So they should make us m make sense out of it. Uh, why this is an advantage, what it will do to us, whether after removing subsidy, salaries will go up, or other things will come down, uh, food prices will come down and everything, subsidy will, will, be, will be geared towards something else that will be beneficial to us. We don't know these things. Yeah, those are, we, those are genuine We need to be concerns. given a direction. Are they, is it going to translate to, um, to a better life yeah. for Nigerians? Mm -hmm. You know, when Zakabala was raising his concerns against the removal of fuel subsidy, he, he said people who are calling for the removal of subsidies for subsidy do not understand the import of it, mm -hmm. what it will do to the life of an average Nigerian, mm -hmm. because that is like the support yeah. that the government is giving through that sector, just as this, the government uh, subsidizes health, education, and every other thing, that when subsidy is removed, then the support that the citizenry is supposed to get in that sector is totally gone. Mm -hmm. And and so, um, as I said, we're waiting to see. He's an economist, an incoming, the, the new president, yeah. Bala Ahmed, is an economist. I imagine he would have sat down with his team, although we're yet to know, we now know three of them, yeah. to crucially take a look at this and break it down uh, and find out what are we going to use to cushion the effects of this subsidy removal. Mm. And even though we now have a Dangote refinery on board, what does that translate to the cost of, how does that impact on how much you're going to yeah. be buying fuel? Because, because it's more or less day, a monopoly right now. So monopoly market right forces now. cannot make the price exactly. come down. Exactly. That's why some says. people were saying he should have waited, made two or out of our three refineries work optimally mm -hmm. before taking this bold step. So... We, we just have to wait and see. Well, but I can guarantee you that before, uh, by the time that this uh, round table will be had and the discussions made to proffer solutions, because they will set committees upon committees and mobilize them and all that, uh, people will lose jobs That's what in I'm this he, Lagos. He should have had that yes. discussion. He yes. should have had that uh, meeting. I mean, you don't vie to become the president of a country and not have done some homework. Yes, yeah, said I was told that the budget did not have any provisions for that. You were told. And what did you say when you were told? So these are the things. Lego, um, employers of labor do not care how you make it to work. The Nigerian employers of labor, the average Nigerian employer of labor, does not care how you make it to work. His own is if you have to be there at 6 o'clock, be there at 6 o'clock, even if you have to trek. And you complain and complain, you were sick, you didn't have a car, you didn't, it doesn't concern them. So what will be the solution should be, um, 
should be found <laughs> as soon as possible it within the week be found, if possible. Indeed. And I, I've been told that we do have a, 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 a report to mm. uh, support what we're talking about. We'll take that report at the moment. A fresh subsidy. Unfortunate. The budget that I've glimpsed before I asked him of him. And what I've had is that no provision is there for fair subsidy. The fair subsidy is gone. Subsidy can no longer justify an ever increasing force and the wake of dry resources. We shall instead the channel whatever to fund the better investment and public infrastructure, education, health care and jobs that we are clearly proved by our people. We target a GDP not less than six percent growth. We end to accomplish all of this by taking the following step budgetary reform. Stimulating the economy without gendering inflation. Industrial policy to utilize the full range of domestic, domestic manufacturing and lessen import dependency. The electricity will become more accessible and affordable to businesses and homes alike. Our generation should really double and transmission and distribution network must improve significantly. Our government will continue to take proactive steps such as championing a credit culture to discourage corruption while strengthening the effectiveness and efficiency of the various and corruption agencies. Security shall be top priority of our administration because neither prosperity nor justice can prevail amid insecurity and violence. To effectively tackle this, we shall reform both our security doctrine and its architecture. We shall invest more in our security personnel, and it, it means more than an increase in number. We shall provide better training, equipment, pay, and for uh, Our president there, he heard that the budget um, uh, did not have fuel subsidy, but the things will be channeled into other, other things that will raise our economy. The GDP will now be 6%, as he has said. But it's not something that will be done in one day. And that uh, tells us that. Um, he has told us that he has no um, hand, more or less, in the affairs or, or how the, the budget is, the budget for this year. And these are his plans for next year, if I understood him the way I, I chose to understand. My plans for Nigeria are X, Y, Z. But for this one, according to the budget that has been prepared by the other people, which I have no hand in, I've been told, but uh, subsidy has been removed. 
what, like we were saying, these things should have been discussed a long time ago, as soon as he knew that he had been declared the president-elect. And while he was trying to pick his ministers, he should have been discussing these things. On the this finance day. minister, mm -hmm. Zain Abame, if you remember correctly, when that announcement was made regarding the suspension of the removal of your subsidy, mm -hmm. made it clear that this year budgeted subsidy for up to May. Mm -hmm. It did not include June. Yeah. And he has said that they have suspended it and they were going to work in synergy with the incoming the administration, administration yeah. to prepare you know, for this. So, um, yeah, he's, he's sounding political there, mm -hmm. trying to establish the fact that I just the start to... Not just, because not because start <laughs> you know, but he cannot be exonerated. True. Yeah, because we had that information given to us by the outgoing administration that we're going to work with them to plan for the continuation of this discussion mm -hmm. over subsidy. And as I said, you cannot be vying for such an exalted office without having thought things through and done some of your homework. Mm -hmm. And so we are going to wait this week and see exactly what clarifications this new government is going to give us regarding this. Mm -hmm. Because are Nigerians ready for the removal of subsidy? Mm -hmm. Yes, there are calls in some quarters for the removal of subsidy because of all that's going on in that sector. But are Nigerians ready for the removal of subsidy? That is a major question because it's going to shoot a lot of things up. Prices will go off the roof and all of that. Thank God for the Angote refinery, but how much can that mitigate? Mm -hmm. That is a question. It's, 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 a, it's, it's, it's not a Nigerian refinery. Mm -hmm. It belongs to the Angote refinery. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned the monopoly that's yes. involved in it right now. Even though we hear there are pockets of other refineries, maybe one or two others in the south-south. But then, we didn't feel their impact until the Angote refinery came on board. And we're hearing it should start um, in June. There are different varying reports that we're going to get the first from June of mm -hmm. July, August. So, whatever that may be the case, I'm expecting that this new government will give us more clarifications this week. He's going to feel the pulse that the uh, fuel stations have shut down. Nigerians are struggling to buy fuel. Cost of transportation has gone high. So there's no way he won't come out to give clarifications as to how uh, Nigerians are going to be helped through the process. Unless he will also be a president that will be talking to us from diaspora. Because the last administration, everything sensitive, we had the information when he traveled. He refused to talk to Nigerians when he was in Nigeria. He will go to London and talk. He will go to any other country and talk. But he won't talk to Nigerians in Nigeria. I do hope this president will not be like that. He will see, like you said, the problems Nigerians are facing. I hope he will see anyway, because sometimes they may not see. And then address us, talk to us about the things that are happening and what he intends to do immediately. We can't wait for 100 days in office for him to give us his call card, as has become the tradition with Nigerian leaders now. Indeed. 100 days in office. Indeed. Well, let's go to our top trending. Um, one of our first stop, our first stop trending is Buhari renames airports after Awolowo, Tampodio, Idiagbo, others. Yes, 15 airports have been renamed after prominent Nigerians. And one of them is the Aboni Airport, International Airport, now Chuba Okadibo Airport. Yeah. The Ilori International Airport, now Tunde Idiagbo Airport. The Port Harcourt International Airport, now Obafemi Awolowo Airport. Uh, there are 15 of them that have been so renamed. Uh, by the outgoing president, Mohamed Buhari. While I rejoice that these people have been recognized uh, because they really uh, contributed to Nigeria's development, Diagbo, Okadibo, and the rest of them that he has mentioned, I also take it with a pinch of salt. I don't think if you have to honor somebody, you will take an old monument and then name it after the person. For instance, Nobody even remembers, okay, if, if you're going to beggar, let me just use this practical example, you are calling for a bus stop, you will call toll gate, because they've always known that place. You call it toll gate or you call it seven up. Yeah. They've always known it. Nobody even cares whether it's called Kosi Sherry or something. I, I can't even remember what the name is, but there's a different name on the bus stop that was named appropriately, but the people knew it otherwise. So you call a stadium that has always been known 
by another name mm -hmm. and you say it's going to be called this way because it is uh, uh, to honor a great man i don't think i don't think that is trying to make posterity remember the good deeds of that kind of a person i think they should have built new things so they should have chosen new things to make sure they if you name a street right now uh after someone that is prominent enough nobody calls the street that name it's always the name that have always known it so why not create a new street for Ibonyi, we can understand it's a new relatively new airport maybe it didn't have a name it was done by this uh outgoing administration oh, yeah. they are so it is possible that they will remember it uh, and call it uh okadibo airport but for every other one who, that has existed for up to 10 years, there's a possibility they will never call it like that except on official documents. So, well, it has been done. But for the future, if you want to name something after someone who did well, name a new thing after them. For me, that's my opinion. Yeah, your, your opinion is valid. Uh, second top trending is Tinubu makes first set of appointments. He's made three. I do hope it will not be interpreted as being nepotistic. Well, because Billy Aleke has been named. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He's a presidential spokesman. Mm -hmm. They've come a long way. Yeah. They've come a long way. And then a former Lagos State Commissioner of Information, uh, I beg your pardon, um, Ambassador Kunle Adeleke has been named as a state chief of protocol mm -hmm. to the president. And then Olusha Gudada has been named Special Advisor Digital Media. And I can understand the sense in which you're saying, mm -hmm. I hope, you know, because they're all Yoruba names. Yeah. Uh, so, but uh, well, there you have it. This is what we have so far. So that is not secretary to this federal government. That is not minister. That is not anything. So let's just take it that, okay, these people, he needs them before he can make the critical appointments and all that. And those he has worked with, we should understand with him. So let us not judge, but like I said, I hope Nigerians will understand like we understand right now. Yeah, exactly, because his spokesperson must be someone who, there, there, there's certain kitchen, you know, when you talk about kitchen cabinets, there must be people that you can trust. Yeah. Every government, uh, any big governor, head of state president, uh, would make his kitchen cabinet people he can trust, people he can go to bed with eyes closed, you know, it wouldn't... Yeah, but we were saying the same thing about Buhari uh, because he was making critical appointments of people that he should ordinarily trust and Nigerians were not comfortable. They were saying that, uh, is that is that the only zone that you could find people you trusted because you worked as an army person and you worked with a lot of people. Couldn't you find X, Y, Z from any other geopolitical zone? So what is good for the goose is good for the gander. You see, so if they will criticize Buhari for doing what he did because he had trust issues, mm. yeah, that's what I, I thought about his administration. He had trust issues. So if uh, Ashwa Dibola Amek Tinubu also has trust issues and has to appoint people from his geopolitical zone, from his kitchen cabinet, from the governorship <laughs> days <laughs> and all that, and exactly. uh, he better does something fast enough to uh, give confidence to Nigerians that that is not another nepotistic. Uh, president coming up. All right, so we'll take a break now to come back and take a critical look at the headlines. We have Chris Kendewando joining us on Off the Press in a moment. Stay with us. <laughs> 